Okay. Good morning and happy Sabbath to, to all of you who are here. I had to look at uh, the timer because last time, uh, last Sabbath, brother, brother Paul went a little earlier, about three, sec- three minutes. <laughs> I was about to tell you, it's not your time. <laughs> all right. First of all, I'd like to welcome all our friends, especially our guests. And we have a few uh, who, who wrote their name in our guest book. Okay, so we have Chris Gal- Is this Galvin? Galvan, okay. Chris, uh, Maria, and... Uh, Roger. All right, so can I see the hands of these people? All right, all right. We thank you for uh, joining us in our worship today, and we hope that you will enjoy and keep coming here until you become member of our church. <laughs> all right, so we also have uh, another person, uh, Lucy. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to, I should have. Hmm. All right. <laughs> I'm having, not because my eyeglasses are. Lucy and Daphne. Huh? Lucy and Daphne. Lucy. Lucky. Oh, Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> okay. Sirlaki, can you please? All right, we're happy to to welcome you to our church today. And then another one, Didi Didi Sim Simbayan. All right, okay. Uh, you are you are very much welcome to our church, and we hope that you will enjoy your stay with us. Another one here is Hope. Oh, I think I know Sister Hope. <laughs> You're welcome, and uh, we hope that everybody is doing good this Sabbath. And I also would like to welcome those who are online, and uh, we hope that you will stay with us until the end of our uh, worship. Okay, and uh, yeah, we have uh, also Brother Julian and uh, Josie, right? And... Uh, uh, they lost their dad, he, Julian's dad, and Jussie's uh, uh, husband. So we hope that uh, you are doing well, and may God bless you in your grief. Okay, anyone else? Hmm. I think everybody is uh, familiar with us here, so God be with you as we uh, go on to worship the Lord this Sabbath. Okay, a few remind, reminders. Uh, please, please read our bulletin. We made some changes in our worship, and we found out that we are spending a lot of time in announcements. So from this time on, this coming uh, January, this would take a thick January, uh, we, we want everybody just to read the bulletin or read the announcement where it is being uh, uh, projected on our uh, projection, projection board. Okay, and uh, uh, everybody is doing well. If there are anything that uh, uh, needs the pastoral care, uh, we have three pastors in this church. One active pastor, that is Pastor uh, Gomez, he is our church pastor, and two pastors who are retired, myself and Pastor Dan. And uh, if you need any visit, you can contact us and we'll be able to we'll, uh, go and uh, see you. So, first Sabbath of the month, we are going to follow some changes in our worship uh, activities. 
Okay, so God be with us and we will uh, go on ahead and uh, uh, go on with our worship. For our, for our uh, call to worship, I'd like to read Isaiah chapter 9, uh, beginning at verse 6. And this is what the Bible says. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So uh, God be with us, especially as we observe the Christmas uh, season, that we will remember that Jesus is the God that became flesh to be with us and to guide us to that heavenly kingdom that he has prepared for all of us. God bless each one of us and let us go on ahead with the rest of our uh, worship service today. Good morning, folks. Happy Sabbath. How are we all doing today? We are going to go ahead and get started with our song service today. And as we remember this Christmas time, this Christmas season, let's remember the true reason for the season, and that is Jesus Christ. He came to this earth. He was the one that was present. He's always been there. He's God. He's the Lord of Lords. He is the one that made us. He is our Savior. It's amazing to think that being such an amazing and awesome God, He decided to come here to this earth to try to save us. So let's keep that in mind as we sing our first song. It's called Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. the baby's Lord of all, swift are winging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the baby's Lord of all, Christ the baby's Lord of all. Fox are sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of the gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow. Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. So we don't actually know. There was three kings that came to Jesus that night. We just kind of assume because there was only three gifts. Um, there could have been three kings, there could have been 12. We don't actually know, but that's not necessarily important as to how many kings there were it was more of the action that they did they didn't need to be there but they wanted to they wanted to fall they had been studying the stars for probably months maybe even years and this was like almost like the epitome of their study and so they came with complete humility these wise men these these scholars just to see a baby in a stable of all things and they came with all their humility 
and they offered three gifts, three humble gifts, well, no, three incredible gifts. They were gold, frankincense, and myrrh to this little child that was born in a feeding trough. And it goes to show how we can be humble. Um, and it's a great example that we can take from that, especially this Christmas season, to give and to give completely, like to give wholeheartedly. Um, no matter what you have and no matter what you can give, it's really more of what's in your heart. Watching the sheep, unbeknownst to the angels, show they were soon to experience. Like the magnificent sight of the angels appearing, a baby was born in a stable not far from, like the city, from the town. So we should always look up to see whatever should lead us, and we should know that the star came from upon the midnight clear. Amen. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts. Of gold, 
Father, what a privilege we have this morning to come to you, seeking your face, seeking your love. This morning, Lord, we pray that we may sense your presence in our hearts, in our midst. Please bless this worship service. Be with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen.
So good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. All right. So for our offering, we will be, it will be for our local church budget. And I would like to read this short story before we receive our tithes and offerings. The Lord called Joseph and Mary to the responsibility of raising the Messiah who would take away the sins of this world. They were poor. They had no resources. They didn't know where their next journey would take them, but they trusted God. They knew God was guiding their lives one step at a time. God has a way of touching the hearts of people from all walks of life. Soon after the birth of Christ, the Magi arrived to worship Jesus. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And this is found in Matthew 2, verse 11. These gifts were unexpected. The Magi traveled far from foreign lands to bring their gifts and worship the Lord. Through these gifts, God provided the income Joseph and Mary needed to take care of their child, Jesus. When we step forward in faith to fulfill the ministry to which God has called us, he opens the way before us. Today, you can be that person who God touches to help others. You can help a, a child go to school. You can join with your brothers and sisters in church to provide funds to reach your community. You can win souls for Christ. When the church calls for support, you can hear God speaking to you. Open your heart and watch how the Lord uses you to, ch uh, to touch the lives for the growth of his kingdom and the kingdom of this church. Now the deacons can now um, grab the tithes and offerings from us.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our kind, loving, heavenly Father, we thank thee for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for giving us this chance to serve you in spirit and in truth through tithes and offerings. May these tithes and offerings be used for the furtherance of your work and may it also be a beacon of blessing to all people. May this be a constant reminder that we are to be a good steward to you and to be a good servant to our fellow men. May you please forgive us from all the sins and unrighteousness that we have done against you. And we ask all of this in the loving name of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. How are you all doing? Are you all happy? It's Sabbath? Yeah? That's really great. I have here a grocery bag. And it because I did groceries yesterday. I was very hungry. I was like thinking of what I'm gonna have for breakfast. What's your favorite breakfast? Me too. Guess what's in the bag? How about you? What's your favorite cereal? Uh, um, 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 cereal is, cereal is busy. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we have in here. What did I got in the grocery? Hmm. I have two bowls. Ooh. What's my favorite breakfast then, huh? Let me see. What is it? 
Yeah, it is. <laughs> is this your favorite? Okay, it's one of my favorite too. Hmm. It's like cereal, right? Does it, do you think it's cereal? <laughs> oh, you guys. Let's see, let's see. Who wants to help me pour it? Okay, you wanna, you wanna try? There's another one. <laughs> Can you pour it for me, please? Because I want to eat my breakfast. <gasps> oh my gosh, what's that? Oh, oh, oh. What is it? Rocks. Yeah, they're rocks. <laughs> right? They're rocks. I don't think I could eat that for breakfast, am I right? Nah, I can't put milk in that. Okay, wait. I think I still have something in here. Oh, there's another one. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> is your favorite? <laughs> me too. It's my most favorite. Okay, who wants to help me pour it? Do you want to try? Oh, you guys could help. You want to help her too? Okay. Someone can hold the bowl here. Okay. Can you pour it? Oh. <gasps> Okay, just a little bit. Oh, oh, I think I don't, I can't eat that much. It's cereal, huh? You wanna guys grab some here? Okay. There. <laughs> it's healthy and keto, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Did you get surprised that what we have in here was not really cereal? Yeah, and this one's really cereal. So what can we learn from this? Sometimes, things aren't really as they appear to be. And we can't be sure that our eyes and our ears are truly seeing and hearing things the way they are. But there is one thing that is sure and always true. What is it? It's God's love for each one of you and me. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, that faith is to be sure of the things that we have not seen. God is as sure as the box of breakfast cereal that always has breakfast cereal on it. When you have faith in God, you can trust Him and believe that He will always take care of you. Who wants to pray before we sit down and go back to our seats? Father, thank you for this day. Uh, help us keep us safe and please forgive us sin and and we mean it. And my grandma and grandpa with me to get my grandpa. Help my grandpa to get better. Please help us to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. You may now return to your seats. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles with me to John 13, verses 5 to 9. John 13, 5 to 9. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. 
Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. The Lord, uh, then, the, then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. For those who are able, can you uh, please kneel down with me in prayer? Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to come to you this morning to worship and praise you, for you are a wonderful and awesome God. Thank you, Lord, for all your goodness. This season specially reminds us of your love and great sacrifice so that we could have that hope of being with you again in that heavenly home which you have prepared for us. Thank you, Lord, for family, for friends, and church. They've all been a great blessing in so many ways to all of us. And thank you, Lord, for the assurance that you will be with us always in spite of all the bad things that is happening around us. In a special way this morning, Lord, we pray for our brother Wilmer Porshinkula, who will be undergoing some um, surgical procedures this coming week. We especially ask for your help and guidance for him, and please touch him with your healing hand. We also pray this morning, Lord, for our speaker. Please touch his lips as he gives to us your, your message for today. We invite Jesus to be the center of our service today, O Lord, and we ask all these things in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know, what to do I will cast all my cares upon you In Isaiah chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. I will be singing an excerpt from Handel's Messiah, He Shall Feed His Flock. Mm -hmm. 
Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing.
We are happy to have our, our lead pastor to uh, feed us with spiritual food, and we hope that uh, each one of us will be able to understand the message that he has prepared for us. And after the spiritual food, we are going to have our physical food during our fellowship plans together at the fellowship hall. So please stay by and join us. Let's have spiritual and physical food this Sabbath. All right, thank you, Pastor Mbao. Thank you for the music. Thank you for everything. Happy Sabbath. How are you today? Are you blessed? I'm blessed, right? As we always say, Sabbath is the dessert of the week. Like desserts? Yes. <laughs> Cheesecake, that's, that's my favorite one. But this, this kind of dessert is not, it's, it's good for your health, right? <laughs> it's not bad for your health. Um, so welcome again to our church. I'm very happy to see our church almost full. Amen. Praise God for that. And I see some, some young uh, students, some young people coming back home. So you're welcome. I'm glad to see Jacob and Isaac. Isaac has been a long time, so welcome back. Okay, God bless you. I know he's doing, you know, he's in the service, so it's always good to have you back here. And I, I know you can see, well, you cannot see right now because she has a face mask back. You can see Solmi smiling, right? Big smile. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, and yeah, everybody. Oh, we have Ivan, too. Uh, thank you for coming back home. And who else we have? We have Abigail. Just playing. Raj. Right there, welcome, yes. All right, everybody. <laughs> All right, yes, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, also, I, I, I saw some people this morning that is familiar to me when I was a pastor in the bilingual church, Hispanic bilingual church. There were uh, church members over there, uh, Sister Maria and her family, bienvenidos. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. You know, I, when I saw her, it came to my mind the way I met her. And with your permission, I'm going to share the way I met you. Con tu permiso, voy a compartir como le conocí. Okay. She used to have a hair salon uh, off of 11. But you know where it's um, Big Lots now? She was right there. So someone told me that uh, that lady over there, she was, she was a former Adventist. So I went, and I went to, to do my hair. And I entered the salon, and she was there. I think one, she just had one client, and she finished one client. So I had to wait a little bit. But later she told me, I found out that when she saw me entering the, the salon, she didn't know I was a pastor. Uh, she, they moved from LA to, to this area, right? Uh, a while ago at that time, and but she stopped attending church at that time, so uh, she was not going to church at that time. So um, I entered the salon, you know, just waiting for my turn, but she told me later that uh, she kind of got scared when she saw me. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I was dressing kind of formal, so she thought it was maybe one of the uh, city inspectors, <laughs> so I was you know, checking on her. <laughs> But then, you know, she, uh, she relaxed when I asked her to, to do my hair. So, um, you know, I, was, I just wanted to start, start a conversation with her. And at one point, I, I told her, you know, I'm, I'm the seventh pastor for the Hispanic church here. And she was, you know, happy. Um, and uh, it took me like maybe three or four visits to, the, to her salon. And, you know, always go there. I never pressured, you know, I never. Did, I always invite her, you know, come back to church, but I never put some pressure because I think, that, you know, it is God. Yeah. It is God who works in our hearts, right? So um, I was so happy to see maybe the third or fourth visit that he ha she has a new schedule, a new schedule for, you know, her salon hours, new hours. And guess what? You had Monday, you know, Tuesday, Friday, etc., and then Saturday, 
clothes. So praise God. <laughs> and so she, she returned to church. Now she's with her family. So I'm glad to see you here, Sister Maria. <laughs> okay. All right. So <clears throat> you will understand later. We have this desire to always understand things, right? At least for me, we all, I always want to understand what's going on. And uh, there is some, there is some uh, jokes or memes, you know, that maybe you have seen, you come across on the internet, about this thick, thick book, right? And I'm not, I'm not uh, sexist, okay? It's just a joke. Um, but have you seen those, uh, those, this, this meme that has this big, big, uh, big, big huge uh, manual? Do you know what's a manual for? It's a, guy, it's a men's guide to understand women's. Right? <laughs> and I, I believe that we, we need a manual like this as well, as a man, right? It's just a job, nothing you know, against women. But sometimes there's, there's things that is kind of hard to understand for us. Uh, how about uh, teenagers? It's easy to understand teenagers sometimes? No, right? Nothing against them, but it's just the way it is sometimes. But, you know, what I think, <clears throat> the most difficult person to understand in this universe, you know who it is? It is God. It is God sometimes. Would you agree with me? Because sometimes God takes us uh, <clears throat> uh, some ways that we just don't understand. We say, God, God why? Why this? So my sermon has to do with that. And I want you to open your Bible. You can see on the screen right there. Jesus answered and said to him. Now, this is in the context of Jesus Christ washing the disciples' feet, right? But I think for me, you know, this, the principles of this passage apply to every aspect in our lives. Okay? Everything that you're going through, you can apply these principles on this text that we studied today. So John 13, 7, Jesus answered and said to him, what I'm doing, you do not realize right now. Other version says, what I'm doing, you don't, you don't understand right now, right? But you will understand when? Later. Amen? So maybe today I'm talking to someone that is going through a difficult time. Maybe you receive some uh, bad test results, medical results. Maybe you're having a family, family crisis. Maybe you're having a financial crisis. That maybe there's something in your family, something going on in your life. So, and you understand. So let me tell you that uh, with the help of God, Hopefully today, you come out of this building with an answer. Amen? And with the assurance that God is with you. Amen. And we go to difficult times in life, right? We all go to crisis. So, hopefully you can see it. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say, if, as we uh, dissect this verse, the first statement is Jesus answered. You know, he has a question. He, you know, Peter, when, when Jesus came to Peter, he said, no, 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 you, can, you cannot wash my feet. Don't do that. And then Jesus replies. Jesus answered. So, brothers and sisters, let me tell you that God always answers. Please don't doubt about that. Please have the assurance about that. God always will answer your question. God always have an answer for your problem. Right? That's the assurance that we have. Look what he says here. I waited patiently. So that's the that's thing, right? We had to wait patiently. And you know, that's one of the problems that we have today. We, we live a, a busy life, right? That's the lifestyle we have, we have. Our society is about speed and business and production, right? We as a society, we value that. We, we don't have time. We don't have time to wait for God until he answers. And that's one of the problems. But probably, you know, the reason why you have to go through that problem is because once 
God, God, I'm sorry, God wants you to develop patience. Because if we, want, if we want to listen to God's voice, we need to be patient. Amen? Amen. So, wait patiently. We want it now, but God says, wait, wait. For the Lord, and he turned to me. God never forsake you. God never is going to leave you alone. He also is going to turn to you and look at you. All right? You have to do this, per, you have to make this personal. An experience with God is not about a church, a, the whole church as a group with God. It's about you individually with God. Amen. God is your God. God is my God. Okay? And you are unique in God's eye. And He always going to turn to you. Amen? Even though sometimes you see, like, what is God? I, I, I am so insignificant that God forgot about, about me. Am I am I'm too bad? Am I so, so sinful that God forgot about me? No, that's not the case. God always going to turn to your, his eyes to you. Right? So, and heard my cry. He hears you. Always. When you open your heart, he hears you. Brothers and sisters, God is real. Amen? God is real. Please have that assurance that God is real. He's not, you know, God is not a concept, it's not an idea. He's real. He has been real in your life and in my life, I'm sure. He lifted me out of that slimy pill, pit, I'm sorry, out of the mud and mirror, and set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Is that what you want? Yes. And God can do that for you. And look, if you see this passage, it's about what Jesus does. It's about what God does. All you have to do is just wait, right? Go to him, cry out to him. Ask for help. Christianity is not about what you do for Jesus. Christianity is about what God does for you, what Jesus does for you. But it's, it's all about God. He put a new song in my mouth. Amen? That's the conversion experience. Now you, you sing a new song, a hymn of praise to our God. Now listen to this. That's very important. What happened next? After he pulled you out of the, of the pit, of that hole, what happened? Many, right? Many. So, listen to this. When you wait for God, wait for his response, wait for his answer patiently, and he answers to you, and you, you're not, you are not anxious, you are not depressed, but you have faith in God, others can see, right? So, this is a witnessing experience. You see what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, when you are patient to God, when even though you are through tribulation, when, even though you are going through a crisis in your life, whatever type of crisis, and you remain faithful to God, and you remain calm and with peace, you know, that's, the, that's the greatest sermon that you can preach to the people. Right? You don't have to go door to door, knocking doors, Nothing bad against that, right? Not, nothing bad with that. But Christianity is not a concept. It's a lifestyle. Right? Witnessing is not just giving Bible studies or passing out gloves, which is, are good. But Christianity, witnessing, is a lifestyle. Are you with me? Your response People want to see how you react. That's why he said, many, many will see, right? And fear the Lord as a result of that experience that you, you have with Jesus. And put their trust in him. So others, when you see that your faith, others want to have faith as you. Are you with me? So Jesus answers always, right? Now, what else? All right, let me see. 
it's not working, so yes, thank you. All right. What I'm doing, for me, also that's a meaningful statement, because it's God doing something, right? For me, this statement tells you that God is in control, right? It doesn't say what you, Peter, are doing, what I'm doing. So God is our rock. He is our fortress, and he is in control. So let's make it clear. Whatever situation that you're going through, you know, God is there, and he's in control. And there is a reason why he allows you to go through that specific situation, because there's something that he wants to change in your life, or he wants to improve in your life. Everything happens for a reason. Amen? So what I'm doing, and this reminds me of the potter, right? You know the story in Jeremiah 18. Okay? How just uh, something happens, something goes wrong, and it can redo the pot, the pottery again. Because God has the power. So it doesn't matter if you have failed. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. God can transform always your life. Amen? He can transform your life always because that's what he does. That's his specialty. To, to transform your life and give you a new, a new life. A new vision of things. Right? Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do... So who's the one doing? God. It's not you. Okay? He's the one in control. Can I do not with you, Israel, as this father does? Yes, he can. Declares the Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands. Amen? Amen. You're in the hands of Jesus, of God. And he's doing what he do. Okay? For a reason. Israel. All right, let's, let's move on. Okay. Yes. The second statement, I mean, the, the third statement. Do, you do not realize right now. Again, other versions said, you don't, you don't understand right now. Throughout my life, I have been in different situations that when I'm in that situation, I understand. I want to tell you something, uh, brothers and sisters. When you're in crisis, when you are in a, a diff very difficult situation, instead of trying to understand, try to trust. Crisis times, difficult times in life, are not understanding times, are trusting times. You get that? You can see that, hey, Peter, you don't understand. Don't, don't ask me for, to explain to you because you don't understand. You don't, you don't have the ability to understand right now. So, relax. Trust. Are you now going through difficult times in your life? I encourage you to trust. Instead of trying to find answers, and spend all your energy, spend nights talking, why, why, why I have to go through this? Why God, instead of, you know, spend sleepless nights, nights going around these thoughts, trying to understand, spend the night praying to God so he can increase and strengthen your faith. You trust on him, amen? Crisis times are not time to understand. There are times to trust in God. Amen. You understand? Why? Because God's thoughts for you are different. That's what I'm saying, you know, the most difficult person to understand in the universe, it is God. <laughs> it is God. Especially in those times. Why? <clears throat> Maybe the first time in my life Maybe I, and I already told you about this, but I want to emphasize that because for me it was 
I understand when this happened, when I had to go through this. Do, you have, do we have here in, this, in the audience a eight years old kid? Anyone eight years old here? Who is eight? No one? Okay, can you stand? It's a little kid? Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I was eight years old just like her. When I had to move from my town from my family to a different city. That was hard for me. Little kid. Why I had to move? Because my mother got very sick. Very sick. And I'm the youngest one of the family. All my, my brothers and sisters, all my siblings were gone. They were their family. So I, you know, my, my father, my mother went through different treatments and she decided to go to natural medicine. So she was, she was gone for months. And it was only my dad and I. And my dad, you know, he was just working. Uh, uh, so she, he couldn't take care of me. So, you know, I started cutting school, I would go and eat, you know, uh, uh, I would go eat to my grandma's uh, home, but it was not the same. So I w it was very hard for me. It was very sad. So one of my older sisters decided to take me with her to live a big city. So that was a change for me. And let me tell you, it was not easy. And at that time, I understand even though, you know, my sister, she was, uh, she was really good, she was really nice with me. I always say that she's my, she's my second mother because she raised me. But I wanted to be with my parents and praise God, my mother recovered. But I don't know why I didn't, I didn't go back to live with my parents again. After a, a year or so, my mother came back home but somehow, well, I think it was God that put in my heart, just stay here, stay where you are, even though it's hard for you. And you know now when I look back and, and see that experience for me, it was hard for a little kid. Now I say, God, I understand now. Because it was in this other city, when I moved to, to live with my sister, she was already Christian. She was Adventist. So I remember the first, the first Saturday, you know, after I moved, the first Saturday. Well, Friday, I saw her, like, cooking, okay? Like, Friday afternoon, she started cooking and cleaning the house. And was, what's going on here? We're going to have a party or something tomorrow. But she told me, you know, tomorrow we go in church. And, um, you know, uh, my mother was Catholic, hardcore Catholic, leader of the local church in, in, you know, in my town. <laughs> but now I thought we were going to a Catholic church. But she said, well, we went to the Adventist church. Adventist church. And, and what is that, you know? How do you eat that? <laughs> You know, what is that? What, what Adventist? I thought it sounded like a dentist, you know? Dentist. <laughs> I went to a dentist. It was strange for me, but, you know, that was the first time I went to church, and I never stopped going. <laughs> so it was a small church, only 15 people, around 15 people. It was a small group, starting a small group. We have this, uh, we had children, you know, children's room, all ages, right? One, uh, one uh, children's teacher. And I like it, you know. And it was in that church that I fell in love with Jesus. And I fell in love with the church. Amen. So, what I didn't understand at that point, and even I was sad and depressed, and I was mad with God because why I had to leave my parents? You know, I was a spoiled one. I was a little, you know, no one else was there. So all the tension, all the love for my parents, it was for me. 
And maybe that was another reason, right? Because <laughs> we're going to be a spoiled one. They were going to mess with me. And when I see my classmates, you know, people from the same age, that the lifestyle, that the kind of life they're living, you know, a lot of cerveza, alcohol, smoke, broken lives. Many of them didn't get, unfortunately, education, higher education. I say, God, thank you. And uh, please forgive me because at that time, I was mad at you. But now I understand. You pulled me out. So what you understand now, what? You will? That's what I tell you. Don't try to understand God. Don't try to understand what's going on. Just trust God. Because God has a plan for you. Amen? Amen? All right. As the heavens are higher than the earth. You know, when I was a, a kid, I just wanted to be with my parents here. But God has higher plans for me. And God has higher plans for your life, young people. Do you believe that? Amen. So whatever you're going to face in life, young people, don't be mad at God. Don't ask, don't ask him, why me? Why I have to go through this? Just trust him, and later you will see it. Just trust God, okay? So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts? Okay. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and build all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So, this is the other statement. You will understand. And that's also it's a promise. And it's an assurance, right? It's not that you're never going to understand. You will understand. Now, notice that Jesus Christ doesn't, doesn't give you a, a, a time frame, right? Well, you're saying two years, five years. You know, there's, there's things that happen to us. It might take us life to understand, Right? It might be things that I understand in my life. Why, why I have to go through this? Still, it might take life. And even, I'm going to go further. It might things in your life that you're never going to stand in this life. Only when you're in heaven. So that's, that's faith in God. That's trust in God. Amen? You will understand when? Later. But Jesus, when? Tomorrow. Two days from now. Next month, next year. No, just later. Just trust God. God times are perfect. Right? God times are perfect. All right. I want to, I want to see the story of Joseph. I'm almost done with this. Joseph. You know the story, right? Can you imagine Joseph being sold as a slave? And maybe I, I relate to Joseph because also he was taken to a faraway city, a nation. He has no hope to come back home, right? And actually, he never came back home, as you can see, right? But that was God's purpose. Now, can you imagine this, this kid going, you know, on the way to Egypt and leaving behind his land, his family, his heritage, his identity, his liberty, because now he's a slave. He left behind a lot of stuff. I'm sure at that time, you know, he didn't understand. But, you know, there was something good about Joseph. He didn't hold resentment against God, neither his family, right? Because God was with him. Amen. So, you know the story, and the time, the time came, you know how the whole story, we're not going to go through all that story, but at the end, when he revealed himself to his brothers, for me, it's a very exciting moment. I like this, this story. When he reveals to his brothers, because, can you imagine that, that scene right there? What went through the, the, the brother's mind at that time? 
I'm Joseph. <gasps> I thought you were dead. <laughs> now you're the, you're the most important man in this country, in this nation. This is it for us, right? You see how we don't understand God? Brothers, they thought that Joseph was gone, that Joseph was dead. And they were, when they did what they did, when they, uh, when they saw Joseph, they were trying to just get rid of Joseph because of jealousy, right? But they, they didn't know that that was God, part of God's plan because they didn't understand God. Are you with me? So don't trust your thinking. Are you with me? Don't trust your reasoning. Because you might think that you're doing the right thing, <laughs> the right way. But you always have to pray to, to, to pray to God and say, God, is this what I'm doing? It is good? It is what you want me to do. Don't trust your own, your own understanding, please. Trust God. So, let's read this. Exciting moment. Then Joseph said to his brothers, okay, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? Okay, interesting question. But his brother, what happened? They froze, right? <laughs> I would, maybe, if I went in their place. I could not, the, the brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed in his presence. But now, now the story continues. He said, do not worry. Why? But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourself. Wow. It's providing some counseling, forgiving counseling, right? Forgiveness counseling. Because you saw me here. Yes, you saw me. Okay, and you were thinking one way, but listen to this. For God sent me. So at this point, now a grown man going through life, Joseph is able to understand, right? To understand God. So what he will understand at that moment, he will understand later. And please, we need to listen from, we need to learn from this experience of Joseph, Right? There's going to be a point, like I said, maybe, most of the time I would say, in this life, there's going to be a point that you can understand. And when you're able to understand, you're going to be in peace with God. And also, you're going to be in peace with yourself. Because you know what happens. You know what happens. Why we have so much anxiety? Why we struggle so much? Because we resist to understand. We resist to accept our reality many times. And we're struggling. We're struggling in our minds with that. Why me? Why have to go to this? So st stop struggling with God. Stop struggling trying to understand your reality. And wait, patiently wait for God. Because this time is going to come to your life. When you can go, uh, turn back and say, now I understand. It was not you. You thought it was you, but it was, at the end, it was what? It was God. And listen, it, three times, three times Joseph emphasized this. It's not you, it's not you, it's not, it's not luck, it's not chances. No, it's, it is God. God is in control. Amen? Amen? So, God sent me before you to preserve life. Amen? Number seven, again, and God sent me before you to preserve life. A prosperity for you in you can read in the earth, right? And to save your life again by great deliverance. And again, he finishes with this. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. Amen? Amen. All right. And we finish with this. In reviewing our past history. Having traveled over every step of advance to our present standing. This is energy white, right? I can say what? 
Praise God. When you review your history, can you say praise God? Even though you go through bad times and difficult times, sad times, sad moments, yes, still praise God, amen? As I see what God has brought, I am filled with that astonishment and with confidence in Christ as leader, amen? We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. Amen. Amen. God will take care of you. Trust. You understand? And please don't focus, don't try to understand now. If you're in that situation, it's not time to understand. It's time to trust God. And he will teach you. You will understand later. May God bless you all. Let's all stand for our closing song. Be not dismayed, whatever be tired, God will take care of you. Beneath His wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Father, we thank you so much for 
your word. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Lord, help us to trust you every day in our lives, even though sometimes we don't understand the reason why we're going through that situation. Please increase our faith in you. Help us to look at the past and see the times that you have been with us and you have rescued from difficult times. Help us, Lord, to live a life of uh, communion and fellowship with you. Give us the Holy Spirit, Lord, and please bless everybody who is here. If anyone here is experiencing a bad time, a bad situation in their life, I pray for that person, Lord, that you may open his eyes, her eyes, so they can see that you are there with them. Thank you, Jesus, for the message this morning. Thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, our loving Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen.